us through it and then I'll ask you some questions. Well, the one, the, the, there's only two players that I truly question myself, and I could have gone in many different ways, and if the uh, viewers uh, have a go at me, I think you'd be justified, right? And one of them was uh, Allison and Goal. Uh, you know, it, it just just looking at, you know, uh, Pope, uh, De Gea, uh, even Ederson, and look at their statistics, the clean sheets, the number of goals their teams gave, gave up. Maybe Allison is not the one that I should have picked. Uh, I have a soft spot for him, but I, I just think that, Without him, Liverpool season would have been even worse. I mean, he's steady Eddie in a team that, you know, disappointed just about in every position on the pitch, with the exception of maybe Mo Salah, right? So, so I, I just remember so many games where he, he kept Liverpool in from, you know, from being maybe in 12, 13, 14 spot. I know they had a, obviously a great end to the season and they showed that with all the good players coming back, uh, Liverpool are still a formidable force. But I just thought that Allison did so many good things, still great with his feet, made unbelievable number of saves. So, uh, but, but that one, I could have gone every which way on this one. Um, Okay, so let me let me say it. So the, you have to say there is a little bit of bias. Who would have been your closest second in the goalkeeping spot? My closest second, I think it would have been Ederson. Uh, Eddie Pope, great. I mean, their defense uh, has been superb. Nick Pope. <laughs> huh? Nick Pope, what did I say? Eddie Pope. Yeah, that, that, that's my old. It's friend. the end of the season, Yanish. We'll let you off. Well, there is an Eddie Pope, but believe me, Nick Pope. See, maybe that's why I didn't pick him because I thought he was a defender. Um, but Ederson still, uh, you know, because I look at all around, you know, how you play with your feet, how you start the game. That to me is important. The hair is obviously sensational and, you know, and all that. But uh, so there you have it. The, the only other one that I won there was Odegaard. But because, you know, I could have put Casemiro in there. I could have put Bruno Guimaraes. But you know what? When I look at Odegaard, nothing good happens if he's not in the game. And there's been many games with Odegaard where he's been very, very quiet, but there's always something in the game that he does, even when not at his best. His creativity, the ability to score goals, uh, he's the brain of that team in the center of the pitch, uh, and I couldn't get away from him. I knew that he, uh, I mean, he obviously had a great season, but it would have been very, very easy for me not to put him in that lineup and I think I would have been forgiven by many fans, right? Because I know that many uh, don't see him in there ahead of the players that I've mentioned, someone like Casemiro, Bruno Guimaraes, just to uh, name the few. But I, I just think that nothing good happens for Arsenal if he's not uh, in that lineup. So other, other than that, oh, Luke Shaw at left back between him and Estupinian. I had some issues there, but being a left back, it's I just tough. think overall Estupinian had, had a superb season on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and that eighteen million dollars was it? It's an absolute bargain. Casemiro, though, it must have been so hard. You must have wanted like twelve players in your lineup. Well, I tr I wanted to be true to my for formation too because I wanted to avoid playing like uh, you know formations where you have I don't know ha Holland or Kane playing on the left hand side. So in order to have that formation. Uh, you know, Rodri was, you know, Rodri for me is one that can hold the midfield all by himself, as we've seen it. Although he does have help, obviously, at Manchester City, uh, the way, you know, Kyle Walker in the past, or now John Stones comes into that midfield and all that. But Rodri can hold the midfield all by himself. Uh, and that's why Odegaard had to be there. And um, who, did I, who else did I put in there? I forget. You put Kevin De Bruyne and Bruno in your midfield. Uh, and Well, Bruno. Uh, I think sensational season. So if I'm going to pick one Manchester United player over the other, I, I just could not. I, I think Bruno meant so much uh, for Manchester United that uh, that I just didn't want to put two. And um, I had to choose between Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes, and I thought this was wiser. Even though you didn't have to choose between the next two players, I'm going to put to you because they're both in year 11 I am going to make you choose between them so talk to me about Erling Haaland and Harry Kane because obviously Erling Haaland's stats are undeniable everything he's done this season his first season in the Premier League goal scoring records galore it's been incredible and amazing to see and I don't want to underestimate that but Kane's numbers with a struggling Spurs side like this obviously you've taken these into account my question to you is which one would you rather have in your team I think if I had mentioned, uh, uh, look, I mean, this is a tough one, right? Well, let's say it's Man United then. Let's no, say it's Man no, United. No, no. Which strike do you want? Let me, let me put it this way. If you take the age of the player, how much they cost, what they've done in the past, right? And if you just look at the players, I mean, there really isn't a one thing that Erling Haaland's better than Harry Kane at. There isn't. 
There, there just isn't. Now you can score, say go, goals. Obviously, scored six goals. Those are facts. You can't question that. But you can look at you know, and, and we see it on Twitter. Despite you know, if meant you know, look at the the the, the cast that uh, Erling Haaland has or not. But you know, my point is that Harry Kane's been doing this for years in this league. I know Erling Haaland has done it in the Bundesliga, and I'm sure he's going to continue to do it. But if I look at the first touch, if I look at the invo- involvement and in build up in just about everything, and you know, play in the air, how much, mu- how many different ways uh, Erling, uh, Haaland, I mean, um, uh, Harry Kane can score. Other than the physicality and pace, and I don't really think that Harry Kane needs that because he's so intelligent. And obviously, we've seen how many times he sets up a play or sets up a goal for himself. His intelligence to make sure that he gets the ball deep in the midfield, plays it out wide just so he has time to get on the end of it, right? Uh, There really isn't. I mean, be honest with me, listeners. Show me one thing uh, or two, because I'm sure there's one. I I just don't see it. I just technically and intelligence wise and, you know, we sometimes sit here and say, well, Erling Haaland had nine touches, but look at that. He's got one or two goals. Well, that's great. But I want my forward to have 28 touches and score two or three goals or maybe set up somebody else as well. So so this is not a knock. But if you ask me an honest question, I have to say it that we can overlook what Harry Kane has done this season, because to me, it's absolutely incredible. It's on par to what Erling Haaland has done. Okay, you're going to feel like you're back at school now. I'm going to give you a statement and you have to fill in the blank. Kane scores mm, if he played with City this past season. Yeah, at least 30 or 31. But I think he would have... Not as many. (laughs) Yeah, but that's... You know, I mean, City did not did not need 36 goals from Erling Haaland to win this this title. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.